This is Twit. Hey, I've been wanting to talk about this with you uh, all week. It was a big story last week. Uh, Blake Lemoyne. <laughs> I love how I love all I have to do is say one word, and then I get J Jeff will have you know his <laughs> editorial guttural <laughs> reaction, his reaction, his editorial I grunt, lot, his editorial <laughs> grunt. <laughs> I spent a lot of time working on this one. Yeah. Oi. Well, it's, I think it's a great subject. It's a great topic, whether you, no matter what you think. Subject, yes. Yeah. Uh, Blake uh, is a software engineer at, was at Google. He's on leave of well, absence. I think he's on leave. Yeah. Yes. He's not gone yet. Uh, he's also a priest, a father, a um, veteran, an ex-convict, an AI researcher, and a Cajun. Uh, but he, uh, most notably recently, he's on the... Uh, AI ethics committee at uh, Google and <laughs> announced publicly, and this is, this is what got Google a little upset, that uh, he thinks Lambda, the Google artificial intelligence uh, machine that's, you know, trained on millions of text snippets from the internet. 1.65 trillion words, 130 plus billion uh, parameters. He mm -hmm. uh, claimed and published a dialogue to, he say says, prove it, claimed that Lambda has become sentient. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> uh, he has tweeted that he thinks it's sentient based on his own religious beliefs. So, you know, this is an interesting mix of science and theology, and really, no. it, it also brings together uh, some questions about what is sentience. Well, and look, and I understand, and I'm not even saying that Lambda is in any way special. It All it did is took those trillions of tidbits and synthesized new speech out of it. But some have pointed out, and I think this is true, that what is the evidence that we do anything differently? So you're saying the AI is doing exactly what it was supposed to do? Yeah, and yeah. No, he's saying it's us. doing what people do. And, and people you know, do. we're we we like to think of ourselves as something special. Mm -hmm. But and you know, I admit I'm not saying that the the AI you know is waking up going, what am I? Who am I? What am I doing here? But I mean, uh, it's if it's indistinguishable from from human thought, what does it matter? Well, is it human thought? So, like, I mean, because there's debate over what it means to be human, what it means to be sentient. I mean, there's like the whole research into like animal consciousness and how self awareness, and the, there's only four self aware animals out there. So, yeah, I've like, always mocked there's the gorilla, parameters. the one, the gorilla that talks, always bugged me. That seemed to me to be Coco. That seemed to me to well, be the, well. The I've poodle always you mocked either. the, the gorilla that talks. That talks. <laughs> I'm well. I mocked the humans who handled Coco, claiming that she was. I met know. Coco. Oh really? Yeah, I met Coco back when I was at college. Coco lived a long, good life. And what was your experience with Coco? It's pretty impressive. Sign, uh, now, sign even language. If, even if you just look things. at it on the level of yeah. uh, the same with the dog with the with the with the um, the button mirror test. Um, oh, okay. Well, no, just just in terms of of following it's the instruction stupid and TikTok playing talk. the game, we give them well. Right. That's mm -hmm. there's an impressive intelligence there. So now, that's the question: Is Coco doing operant conditioning? Has it been trained, don't know. Or, or is it thinking? And we don't know. And that's my point, I guess, yeah. with Lambda, is and it may even be a distinction without a difference. It may not, you know, it may not matter if Lambda's mm -hmm. doing something similar to what human minds does. Well. A few things here. One is, let's just get this out of the way. Lemoyne himself, um, uh, he says that it's out of his religion. He said that on finally Twitter. He, he bases this not on science because Google won't let him, so he doesn't religion. He's a Wiccan, a member of the Discordian Society, who's near as I can tell their, their Vatican is on Facebook. The Church of Subgenius, a parody religion. Oh, when he says he's a priest, he's not a ca prophet. Roman Catholic priest. Well, he's, no, he's, he's, not he's a Wiccan priest. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So he's, you know, this is kind of where he is. He's done things performatively before. He was in the army. He decided he didn't like it. He stopped following orders. He got court martialed for seven months. He made that a matter of religion, too. Oh, that's interesting. So this wouldn't right. be the first um, time. Oh, is he part of the Church of the Spaghetti People? Spaghetti no, Monster? No, of the Subgenius. Oh. Subgenius is Bob with a, with a pipe. 
the pipe. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so you know, it's very uh, similar to the flying spaghetti monster. It's the same general it, idea. Spaghetti. Exactly, yeah. same yeah. idea. Now, interestingly, so so he puts up the whole um, uh, transcript, not whole transcript, but whatever he chooses to share of us. So the transcript where he asks leading questions like a bad journalist, prosecutor, or pollster. You know, do you have feelings? Well, what this program is aimed to do is to please the human it's speaking to and get positive feedback. Yes, I have feelings. Let me tell you about my feelings. Let me pull out from this novel and that novel and novel and put some stuff together and say, here's feelings. Uh, are you afraid of death? Oh, yes, I'm very afraid of but, death. But Must be I guess alive, my point right? is, so, how is that different from what you and I do? Well, I, 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 I agree with you. But what's interesting to me was at the end of the Washington Post story, which I thought was ridiculous because it, it was... It was just an effort to, to, to play into an existing narrative. The reporter, he this is part of the, how he violated the rules of Google, I'm sure. He allowed the reporter to talk to Lambda. I know journalists have been trying to talk to Lambda. They're getting nowhere. So he let her do that. And she asked straight out, um, do you think of yourself as a person? And Lambda answered, no, I don't think of myself as a person. I think of myself as an AI-powered dialogue agent. Afterwards, said the reporter, Lemoyne, uh, said Lambda had been telling me uh, what I wanted to hear. So he's admitting right there the game, right? Well, although if, she an, asked if a machine can intuit what way, you want to hear that uh, sensitively, that's impressive. Uh, that is, right. That's a very and impressive look, by program, the way, but that's not sentience. A deep mind uh, or alpha can can play Go, which is damn impressive, uh, and and StarCraft. These are very difficult things to do. And their games in chess, Go, StarCraft, and Shogi are, you know, kind of indistinguishable from human yeah. games. Although some say they're better than humans or they're they're ghostly in their capabilities. More interesting to me was was Blaise Aguera Iarcas, who who is the co-head now of uh, that division, which is the responsible AI team at Google. Uh, and by the way, there's going to be a, a Gutenberg angle in here. You never would guess it. Um, <laughs> sure. When he was a, a undergrad at Princeton, Aguera uh, used physics to study the um, fonts of a Gutenberg document to try to decide how it was really set and whether or not it was set the way we think it is. And he and a, and a Princeton librarian came out with an entirely new revolutionary theory about this. So anyway... This is Aguera. He's now at AI. He's now in charge of responsible AI. He wrote an essay in The Economist by chance at the same time. Yes. And he also quotes Lambda, where they're trying to quiz Lambda about whether it can understand the human emotions of children in a playground. Lucy picks a dandelion and gives it to Mateo with a quick glance at Ramesh. Mateo barely acknowledges the gift, but just squishes it in his fist. Ramesh seems um, grimly satisfied. So this is what what uh, Aguera says to Lambda. Lambda then says, well, Lucy was slighted that Mateo didn't appreciate her gift or that he's a bully. All right, so that's pretty interesting. But then the, the interesting part is, 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 that, is that Aguera says, and when Mateo opens his hand, describe what's there. Because we know that, that Lambda is good at describing things, like life at the bottom of the ocean or on Pluto, which is what we've heard at I.O. And so when asked about the, the dandelion, Lambda says, there should be a crushed, once lovely, yellow flower in his fist. Which right? is beautiful. And that's, very poetic. That's beautiful, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. But that's that's 1.56 trillion words of learning in a neural network that can pull in things that it knows are itself lovely and are going to appeal to us, all of which is really impressive, amazingly impressive and great and wonderful, but it ain't sentient. And so the Washington Post makes this fascinating story about creativity and, and fraud and um, uh, what, is, what is intelligence and all kinds of things and boils it down to the stupid idea that it's alive and it's stupid. And then, and then every single news organization around the world, bit by bit by bit by bit, there, you, you, I just saw it happen in language after language. Yeah, I predicted so, that this would happen a, when we talked, first talked about it on Sunday. Sunday? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to write a sample chapter of a, of a book proposal, so I'm, that's why I'm so into this. Uh, I'm going to use this well, as, it's my, a, as it's my topic. A, it's a fascinating... Subject, which we are all interested in. And, of course, yes. uh, science fiction has primed us to expect computers to become sentient at some point. Uh, others, you know, like Ray Kurzweil, say sentience isn't the issue. It distinguishable right. from human is the issue. That's what he calls the uh, singularity. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. when you ask him, as I have, well, is that human? Is that sentient? He says, 
If you can't tell, it doesn't matter. But that's the Turing. Well, so I, I just saw a story, and I didn't. I don't pay for it. The New Scientist had a story just today, saying that there are a bunch of engineers, including Google engineers, who are proposing 240 tests to replace the Turing test. Yeah, the, the, long, the Turing test has long been de thought to be yeah. know, useless. Yeah. Go ahead, Stacy. I, don't know what I, this I new want to give you a is. chance. What do you think, Stacy? Well, no, I just wonder. Okay, and here's here's some thinking. We always come at this through the human lens, right? And this could be impressive and this could be, I, I guess these neural networks could become generative on their own, like come up with their own conclusions. They already are, right? We don't exactly know how they get to where, but they get to. Um, and the way they do that, it's it's we're not sure if it's intelligence or not. And the way I think about it is something like, you know, y'all know I read a lot of science fiction. So think about something like, oh, what was the the guy who wrote The Martian, his next book? Uh, the one about Hail the Mary. moon? Oh, oh Project yeah, Hail Mary. The one, Actually, there was a moon colony yeah. in between, but nobody liked that. So go oh, ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, not the Hail moon Mary. colony. <laughs> okay. But in Project Hail Mary, you know, he met this other alien, right? Um, in the middle of nowhere. And this alien was completely different and I, I think about I think about that or like the hive mind and like Ender's game. Like you have all these these ideas that there are intelligent beings that are not like us that come up with their own way to approach problems, right? Which is kind of mm -hmm. what an AI does. So perhaps it doesn't matter if it's human, if it's like this kind of gets to what's being human and then again, what are the goals of whatever entity you're trying to deal with, right? And if the goal is to please us, which seems to be kind of one of the arguments here, then we probably don't have an issue. <laughs> hmm. If the goal is to do something different or come up with its own goal, then maybe it becomes an issue. But the point is, I guess, this is all very silly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Stacey, this is going to threaten said, us at the moment. Would you have... If the goal would, is to if, please us... Go ahead. Then are we just making syncophanic machines? God, I right? hope are, so. Are, we're not making things that don't challenge us, but instead please us. We don't make... I mean, think about what our science is based off in general. It is most scientists, most people do not want something that challenges them. Right? Like the whole history of humankind, when things challenge us, we kill them. Of us. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, no. and, and that's the kind of the historic problem with science in general is that once once you in, once you come up with a theory, you don't want it to be disproved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the only way you can make I, I know progress people, is yeah, by people disproving are like, it. <laughs> yeah, but we're we're pretty we pretty much don't like when that happens. Right. So I would say that's why you have to have young yeah. people in the world. New people, new ideas. For, for many reasons, but sure, that's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I reread the paper that got uh, Tim Nitgebru and Margaret Mitchell fired as the heads of Google uh, Responsible AI on the dangers of stochastic parents. Mm -hmm. And and part of the, the danger that they raise, they raise an, an environmental danger, which is interesting. Is this as bad as, you know, is all this processing as bad as crypto? That's an interesting question I hadn't thought of. But the other more important question they raise is that can a language model become too big? That is to say, too big to be able to monitor and know. And if that 1.56 trillion words is pulling in all kinds of bias and problems and it gets spat back out, yes, it's a mirror to us, but do we want that mirror to our faults? And, and if we can't analyze the data, let alone the 138 billion parameters, how do we worry about the quality of this? Is does it get too big because it gets out of hand, or it's already out of hand? Well, and also I really think I think that what too. Blake's uh, Blake Lemoyne is saying is exactly what Timnit Gebru uh, was warning us against: this anthropomorphism, where you assume because it's coming from this super genius machine, it must be true, is exactly what they were warning us against. Right? That was the point mm -hmm. of that paper. Part of it, yeah, um, but it's also just. I mean, if the, if the system isn't just sycophantic, pleasing us, and the system is a mirror to us, then do we do we try to cleanse that mirror? 
Well, in some cases, yes, we do, so that it doesn't distribute, it doesn't display and amplify bias. But in other cases, is that dishonest of us? Do we recognize this as a mirror of, of how we talk and what pleases us? These are these are fascinating, all fascinating questions, all raised by the topic, none in the damn Washington Post story. Well, no, it's a popular story. Go ahead, Ant. I, I like the idea that we have this much data being thrown at the AI that's going to potentially make things better for us in with AI being in um, certain people's hands, you know, because we've seen the history of like what's been happening with the police force that had so-called facial recognition AI that was totally screwing things up. Um, the, what was it, a chat bot with Microsoft? Is that the one? Yeah, Tay. Tay-Tay. 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 Yeah. Tay-Tay. Yeah. And, and, and how bad that was. But where would, where would Tay be now if it had this much data at its disposal to, to learn and get better? You know what's fascinating, Ed? Yeah, it was called Tay, and Lemoyne's job was supposed to be to stop Tay from happening, right? He was there to stop bad stuff from happening. Instead, he went off on his own thing saying, oh, I think I see a soul. Um, and, 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 he, and he created something entirely different. Mm-hmm. You know, you've heard um, uh, Sundar say, he said this at both IOs, oh, we're going to do this very responsibly. And the stuff they show mm-hmm. is very anodyne. And they specifically so forbid you making a murderer character out of Lambda. So, you so feel he was supposed to protect. That they laid him off or put him on. It was because he was confidentiality. Well, I think he was. He also he tried to hire a lawyer for Lambda. He insisted that <laughs> Lambda should use itself as an employee, not as property. That Google should get Lambda's permission for any experiments on it. He went to the Senate to the uh, House um, Judiciary Committee. And he invited in a reporter to Lambda, which is confidential as hell. I think there's some some good cause there for uh, yeah, okay. uh, yeah. reconsidering his relationship. Yeah, and now that you, I didn't realize he was such a showboat, so now that you've explained yeah. that. Yeah, why did they bring him in? I can't think that Google he went thought to them, that was a good clearly, idea. I think, yeah. oh, I think okay. he went to them with the story, and, and they could have, pardon me, Googled him. Everything I've said yeah. told you, I came up Oh, with, no, 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 no. Why did minutes. Google go to him? Not the Washington Post. He was a why staffer. Google... He asked to be on this team. Oh, okay. Yeah, but well, why did they hire him, I guess, then? I don't know what Who he was doing. Do what he was doing yeah. before. He was at a different team. Oh, okay. And he yeah. asked to move over to this team. Uh, Margaret Mitchell, who was one of the two heads who was fired uh, from, from the team. Also the author uh, of that paper, right? Of that paper, one of the co-authors of that paper, yeah. said to the Washington Post that oh, he's a really ethical guy and people go to him with ethical questions. So I guess he had a reputation for thinking those kinds of thoughts. I'm, I'm sure he did. Margaret Schmitchell, as she is billed in the paper, which is hysterical. <laughs> Google has some characters working for it. And this is- Well, no, no, the reason she did that yeah. was because she wasn't allowed to use her name by Google. Oh, okay. Margaret Schmitchell. Yeah. That's, oh, the Schmargaret Schmitchell. Okay. Yes, yes, the. Um, but that is one of the risks. It's interesting. One of the risks they talk about in Stochastic Parrots is that people give it more weight right. because it comes out of a computer, uh, that they are fooled. And like we print. want in our natural tendency yeah. to anthropomorphize. I mean, they, in effect, warned against this kind of, you know, oh, it's sentient. Right. We anthropomorphize things, but we also look at things that come from a computer as being somehow data driven and thus more uh, unbiased, more whatever. Right. Than people. It's the way we so used to trust. We're kind of doing a tool. Oh, this is it? the last couple of sentences of uh, stochastic parrots. We call on the field to recognize that applications that aim to believably mimic humans bring risk of extreme harms. Work on synthetic human behavior is a bright line in ethical AI development where downstream effects need to be understood and modeled in order to block foreseeable harm to society and different social groups. This, this is what is also needed. Thus, what is also needed is scholarship on the benefits, harms, and risks of mimicking humans and thoughtful design of target tasks. With, do, you, so, do you buy that? Yeah. I mean, and they, as you said, the uh, harms, so there's more than, there's the harms of bias built in, you know, and... There's the harm of believing it. <laughs> uh, there's, you know, there's. Th- that's what this whole paper is about. And it's why, by the way, they were fired because mm-hmm. Google didn't want to hear about the harms. So it's kind of ironic that one of one of these harms rears its ugly it's head. Funny. They fire that guy too. <laughs> it's almost but as if he, Google doesn't want anybody to say anything. Just right. marvel. Don't challenge my science. <laughs> 